For all the oxygen they produce, our rainforests are often called the lungs of the earth. This is a title which would be more appropriately bestowed on our oceans and the phytoplankton they house, who are responsible for the creation of up to 80% of Earth's breathable oxygen. Just one member among them, Perchlorococcus, the smallest photosynthetic organism on the planet, is maker of 20% of total oxygen, more than is produced by all the world's tropical rainforests combined. Unfortunately, oxygen fabrication is not the only area where the ocean is overrepresented. For all of the justified worries of the effects of climate change on our lands, the ocean has absorbed nigh 90% of total global warming in recent decades. Since 1955, the ocean has garnered 326 zettajoules of energy in the form of heat. One joule of energy is roughly equivalent to what is needed to lift a medium-sized tomato a meter off the ground, so not very much. But 326 zeta joules means joules to the number 326, followed by 21 zeros. For an idea of this scale, 326 zeta tomatoes would weigh about as much as our solar system's one-time planet, Pluto. For our ocean's energy intake, that many joules is equivalent to more than all the world's nuclear weapons going off, the total capacity of all the world's fossil fuel reserves, and the annual energy consumption of the entire globe all combined. This immense amount of heat absorbed by the ocean is having deleterious effects. Most straightforwardly, the heat causes the ocean's waters to expand, and this leads to sea level rise with up to half of the yearly 3.3 millimeters of rising being attributable to just this heat. Slight correction, while making this video, NASA released an updated number and it's actually 3.4 millimeters of sea level rise per year. So it's accelerating. Now back to the video. It influences the other side of sea level rise as well. Heating waters accelerate the melting of ice sheets. And melting ice sheets mean rising sea levels. Both of the Earth's major ice sheets Antarctica and Greenland have been losing billions of tons of ice each year since at least 2002. As waters heat and expand and as ice melts, sea levels rise, threatening nearly everyone, from numerous island nations to hundreds of port cities which sustain billions of people across the globe. Higher than normal water temperatures also pose risk to another kind of coastal community, coral reefs. More specifically, the algae which live within and sustain coral. Without this vital food source, coral reefs begin to bleach, lose their color, become more susceptible to disease, and, in many cases, perish. With ocean temperatures around the world rising at dangerously high rates, coral reefs from Japan to Australia to the Caribbean are suffering. The longer the algae are away and the bleaching continues, which is to say the longer that water temperatures remain too high, the higher the chance of coral death. With reefs serving as hotbeds of biodiversity and marine life, coral loss begins a breakdown of a host of oceanic ecosystems. Unfortunately, the threats to aquatic life do not come solely through the lens of coral. Many marine fish, mammals, and seabirds are being put in danger of habitat and breeding ground loss as well. As temperatures change, various species undergo mass movements in search of appropriately tempered environments. If prey or predator move higher in latitude or lower to deep sea beds in search of cooler waters, entire food webs and subsequent ecosystems are disrupted, with slim chance of recovery. And while not strictly a consequence of increased temperatures, ocean acidification is kin to warming in how it endangers the sea. Like it absorbs heat, the ocean also takes in huge amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. While lower in share than heat, 30-50% to 50 of total CO2 enters our ocean. This amount is monumental when considered that CO2 is physical matter, not a kind of energy like heat. More CO2 in the ocean means more acidic water, and more acidic water means more trouble for marine life. Shell builders, for instance, find less carbonates to create their shells and skeletons with some, like that of the pteropod, entirely dissolving in the most acidic of waters. Others, like the clownfish, find it harder to detect predators and find suitable habitats. 
This in turn causes risk to entire food webs. Continuing down our current path of business as usual emissions could produce an ocean in 2100 with a pH number around 7.8, a dangerously acidic level that has not been seen for 15 million years since the end of the Middle Miocene extinction event. This all paints a bleak picture for our oceans, those non-lands that make up the bedrock of so many food webs, ecosystems, and so much of human society. As a people, we gravitate to the water's edge to build our cities, conduct our trade, and seek our horizons. The sea is that medium which connects the whole world, bridging the gap between each and every land. And despite all the damage we see on these lands from climate change and its devastating progeny, the ocean is still holding Terra's tab, staving off much worse damage that, if let run free, would have brought humanity and much of land's life to its knees. But such can kicking cannot continue indefinitely, and the ocean has already shown how it cannot keep up as our carbon and heat dump. We are the captains of our collective carbon-tainted vessel, and we must change course for the sake of all, the ocean, the natural world, and humanity alike.